Breaking tonight, Hillary Clinton apologizes after insulting Trump voters on the campaign trail in New York City. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. So, I go on vacation, I come back, and I have this open all planned. And last night, Hillary Clinton says this. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. And unfortunately, there are people like that. And he has lifted them up. Now, some of those folks, they are irredeemable, but thankfully, they are not America. <laughs> I am a friend and supporter of Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is now neck and neck with Hillary Clinton. So Hillary is basically calling a huge portion of America deplorable and irredeemable. Now, I don't consider myself deplorable, but since you started it, Hillary, let's have at it. Hillary, you bow to and take money from countries who throw gays off buildings. You take money for your so-called charity from countries that don't allow women to drive. A so-called feminist who supports countries that force women to cover every part of their bodies but their eyeballs. And you want to call us Islamophobes? On the eve of the 15th anniversary of 9-11, if I'm from Lower Manhattan, San Bernardino, or Orlando, and I'm afraid of a Muslim jihadist, I'm an Islamophobe? Hillary, it sounds pretty reasonable to be fearful of them to me. And you, you, Hillary, the queen of Black Lives Matter, you want to call me a racist? And you continued to trash talk the Trump supporters. But that other basket of people are people who feel the government has let them down. The economy has let them down. Nobody cares about them. Nobody worries about what happens to their lives and their futures. And they're just desperate for change. Hey, Hillary, you got that one right. We are desperate for change, and you sure ain't it. You are as establishment as it gets. And yes, we're fed up with your kind of government, where the attorney general secretly meets with your husband while you're the target of an active criminal investigation with no less than 100 FBI agents, and you come out days later promising that you'll keep her on as attorney general if you become president. You're right. We're fed up with your kind of government where the destruction of subpoenaed evidence with hammers and bleach pit and delete buttons are tolerated, where you simply ignore subpoenas and you destroy federal documents, where the head of the FBI, when called upon to explain before Congress why you're not being charged with a myriad of federal felonies, is so outclassed and so outlawed that a five-year-old old could write an indictment based upon federal crimes? You're, Hillary, so right. We are fed up. And Hillary, since you started the name calling, Hillary, you are a liar and a pathological one at that. You're a cheat. You're dishonest. You are condescending. You are arrogant, contemptuous. And if you think that your half-assed apology will wipe the slate clean, you are wrong. It takes you 17 hours to figure out that you had to apologize. The ordinary people, Hillary, the people who have to follow the law, who have no choice but to pay their taxes, who have to work two and three jobs, who fight for all of us, many of whom come back with fewer limbs, don't want a president who hates us. 
We don't want a president who thinks that we're deplorable. And on this, the eve of the worst terror attack on this great nation's soil by Islamic terrorists, I can't trust a president who doesn't think that I'm worthy of being an American. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine. And with me now, Democratic strategist and principal of the Dewey Square Group, Marianne Marsh. Marianne, in case you can't tell, I am infuriated. And I don't think it's funny. Welcome back, Judge. I don't no, think it's I funny, know. Marianne. Was she uh, off her I game or understand. what's wrong with her? Well, I don't think she apologized, frankly. I thought when you look at her statement, she doubled down. And I think the very surprising thing about this is, Judge, everything she said last night, she has said weeks previously. She's given speeches about it. This is not the first time or the second time or the third time she's made these comments. She's said it throughout this campaign. I think the surprising thing here is it's the first time the Trump campaign has objected to it. That's the only thing that's different here. Okay. I'm objecting to it. You see, Marianne, they are neck and neck. And she says that you can put the Trump campaign into a basket, half of whom are deplorable, racist, sexist, uh, you know, misogynist, xenophobes, and the rest are just like losers. Uh, I am an American. I come from a family of veterans. And for her to suggest when she's the one who claims she's a feminist and is taking all this cash and her husband's taking all this cash from countries that don't even believe in women's rights. I mean, she's talking out of both sides of her mouth. And by the way, Marianne, while we're at it, and I'll give you a chance to talk, you know, I just and thank you for saying welcome back. But I just read that <laughs> FBI report. She said she had one BlackBerry for convenience. She had 13 BlackBerries and five iPads. Oh, come on. Aren't you embarrassed? No, I read the report, too. And it is also on page 20 where it says there was nothing in the headers. So we both no, read no, the no, report. No, 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 I'm but not asking address... you about the headers. The woman said she had one BlackBerry. She had 13 BlackBerries, and they were oh. crashing them with hammers, and they were destroying them in five iPads. Why did she lie like that? It, it was going, the 13, if you read the report, you noted it goes back to when she was in the Senate through the time she was Secretary of State. Most people burn through those every two years. But let me address your, your points about her statement last night. Yeah. She didn't call people losers, and she didn't call you names either. She oh, is yeah, pointing I'm a Trump out, however, supporter, she, and I'm in one of those two baskets. No, no, okay, hold, well, no, uh, well, if you put yourself in there, then then she I'm put surprised me in because them. I know I've never who heard I am. you say the things that she has discussed, which is she pointed out that there are people who are racist, who are Islamophobic, who are homophobic, who are xenophobic. Go down, go down the list, and there are leaders oh, of those all groups. They all right, side. the white, all the, the, the bad white nationalists in America who have come are out and endorsed side. her, what endorsed did she do? Donald Trump, are all the criminals and on her Donald side? Trump. Are all and the criminals on, on her Donald, side? Well, unfortunately, Judge, I hate to point this out, but Donald Trump has made many deplorable comments about women, no, she's about African-Americans, about, about Muslims, me. about Mexicans, she's talking about President about Obama, me. Marianne, about gold I gotta star stop families, you. Marianne, about POWs. Marianne, yeah. you're my friend. Please, this is not about Trump or her. She's talking about me. She's saying that because I support Trump, I am a xenophobe, a racist, that, or, that is not or what someone who doesn't represent America. That is not what she said. That is clearly not what she said. And she, the other part where you, that you referred to losers, the other part are the people who have been wronged by the government, by the economy, who feel that they played by the rules and got played for fools. So those are the two groups she sees that support the Trump candidacy. And Donald Trump does play into that by many of the comments he makes. I will point to one thing, and it shows you the dilemma many Republicans are in. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, when Donald Trump criticized Judge Curiel because his parents were born in Mexico and claimed he couldn't do his job because of it. Paul Ryan said that criticism is the definition of racism. Yet, Good. Paul Ryan Good. still supports okay. Donald Trump 
and told Hillary Clinton Marianne, she should apologize. You're changing today. the topic. This is no, the not. reason I'm so angry, Marianne, is because okay. she's coming after us. And I guarantee you that it took 17 hours to apologize, probably because she was sleeping, because <laughs> she, her people had to convince her, hey, Hillary, you're going to lose this election. It's neck and neck. And if you don't apologize to those people, you're going to lose. Last two, word. Two things, Make Judge. it fast. Okay. You're, you are not the head of Breitbart News. Steve Bannon, who now runs Donald Trump's campaign, who self-identifies as the alt-right. There are plenty of examples I could give, and we could go on and on. But the reality here is it, the race isn't quite as close as you think it is. She has more paths to victory right now than Donald Trump, but it is a close race. I've always said it's going to be a close race. It'll be a close race through November, but I think you've, you, you have really misunderstood her comments last night, and I think that's unfortunate. Yeah, well, you know what? English is my first language, and I'm pretty smart as it goes. Thanks, Marianne Marsh. All Good right, to see you, and now to my panel. Uh, and uh, all right, Boris Epstein with the Trump campaign and Chris Hahn. I, I, I got to tell you, a lot of people are upset <laughs> about this. And do me a favor, guys. You know why? I want to have a I want to have a smart discussion about yes. this. Uh, I am outraged by what she said. Uh, and I'm not going to let you go off on this, Boris. Chris, what I want to know is this. When she made that statement, was that statement a mistake? Absolutely. I am. And by the way, and when I saw this this morning, when I woke up and I knew I was coming on with you tonight, I said, oh, my God, I better bring roses for the judge. She is going to think this about her. So on behalf of every Democrat pundit in America, judge, it's OK. I don't think she was talking about you. And she should regret it. You should never talk about your opponent's supporters. What? You should talk about your opponent you or your wife. that is? That's the Saul Alinsky approach where you marginalize and demonize the enemy. I, look, I mean, I, I've been accused. I've been, there are a lot of people out there say, you know, all liberals are this or all conservatives are that. All of nothing is nothing. People are people, and people support a candidate for a variety of reasons. Some of them rational, some of them irrational, but all of them are based on something in their personal lives. And you can never take an attack out on a, on a person's supporters. You, you look, you say why you're the better candidate, you say why your opponent Is it differs. Hurt her? I don't think so. You know why? And I've been saying this a lot because, and, and Boris, you'll agree with me. I don't think this election is about Hillary Clinton anymore. I think this election is a referendum on whether or not Donald Trump is fit to be no, president. I will not agree with that. Not anymore. That, I will I absolutely not agree with ahead, that. Boris. So Hillary Clinton has been hated in public for over 25, 30 years. The public is just getting to know Donald Trump, and they don't hate him. They may disagree with things he said. For Donald Trump, it's words. For her, it's been actions that she's been wrong in her actions, Secretary of State. But now it's words for her, too. This was disrespectful. Respectful. It was deplorable, really, for her to say that. And here's the question. What else has she been saying in these fundraisers that we don't know about? You know this is how she truly feels. She's been hiding from the media for almost a year. What else has she said? What is truly in her mind? And now it's coming out. Okay, when you said that at the fundraisers, I, I had to reach out for some notes. Do you know, when, when you said that, I wanted to say, what else has she said, like, at some of these Wall Street events? Right. Like Goldman Sachs, when she gave these speeches. Did you know that this week, Goldman Sachs put out right. a memo and said that no employees are allowed to give Donald Trump money? Goldman right. Sachs put out a memo. Wow! It was a, it was in the Wall Street Journal. You know what this really Are hurts you her with? kidding? I, this really hurts over the Bernie Sanders voters. That's where it hurts the most. The Bernie Sanders voters who are disenfranchised, they feel that they've been wronged by the establishment. And this sort of statement on Wall Street at Cipriani's, which is very nice, and listen, God it's bless. Great. She wants to sip champagne cocktails with Barbara Streisand, but that's not what the American people okay, in Ohio, I, I mean, Florida. The Bernie Let me Sanders finish. Thing. Maybe we just talked about. I know, but you've got to watch Ohio, to Florida, now. and Pennsylvania. That's not what the voters want. Okay, so now that she has said this, you know what? I am reminded of Mitt Romney, 47%. There was some truth to it, and he paid dearly for right. it. He did. All right? There's no truth to half the basket are the deplorables, and they are I, not America. I, I, I'm as America as you get. My father, you know, was on a ship to Nakisaki. My grandfather stormed the beach in Normandy. I'm infuriated. Uh, I don't think it hurt Mitt Romney as bad as the media made it out to be. I think the election was pretty much set 
by yeah, that point in correct. time. And I don't think that it hurt him. I think it played into a narrative that was continuing about him that he was out of right. touch and that he thought people were beneath but him. And that's why it hurt. And that's why this hurts her. But it plays she's into a, a narrative seasoned of politician. She's not. She's a terrible candidate. Look at her history I, I as a candidate. I didn't say she was a good one. I'm saying she's been through the ropes for 30 years. Yeah, well, two, late, uh, two senatorial elections, which were, with all due respect to my good friend Rick Lazio, not the hardest elections. Then she got crushed in 08 by a freshman senator. Then she almost lost to a 74-year-old social <laughs> The and now, listen, the Democrats just a couple of weeks ago were talking about how, oh, the Republican Party is going to give up on Donald Trump. Look where we are now. Look. Leading in North Carolina, leading in Ohio, okay. leading this in This was a mistake. But you know what else was a mistake? Talking about how Putin's a great leader when he's a dictator. No, no, he didn't say he was a great that's leader. That's he said he was a leader. He said he was okay. a better leader than the democratically elected president of this United States. That's a pivot. You know what? And you know what? I got to tell you. Oh, you know, I got to pivot. Said, yeah. here, Give me that. Just Just talk about Let's this talk all about our health. Let's talk <laughs> about our health. Okay, I'm reading the FBI report. I come back from vacation. I'm all excited. I want to show everyone was my judge? pictures. Was I can. It was wonderful. I can't show you a picture. No. Too much news. <laughs> so, anyway, what'd you say? Hampton? No, no, no. Way far away. Right. Anyway, and so she says she can't remember half the stuff and whether or not she was informed about whether or not she should sign this or sign that because she had a concussion and then she had a brain clot and then she doesn't remember anything. Now she's got no stamish and she's got no events. Trump is like quadrupling her and, and doing more events than she has. The woman can't remember stuff. She's tripping. She's coughing. Uh, and Dr. Drew lost his job, I, I'm reading, because he said she's got health issues. Is she going to make it yes, to Yes, she's going to make it. She's perfectly healthy. How do you know? Donald Trump's got to do events. It's all his campaign is. He doesn't have a ground game. He doesn't, he doesn't need the ground game. Hold on. We he absolutely, absolutely does. Hold on. That's, and you're incorrect. We have a great ground yeah, game. Yeah, now they we have, have a ground better game. ground game. I don't care game about the ground game. I'm talking about the stamina. I want a president who's going to be working 18 hours a well, day. This woman was sleeping for 16 you know hours. That's why I took I so long. We're going to talk about health. Let's get a real doctor to examine Donald Trump. I know he's friends with I know he's friends with Putin. I hope he doesn't do a shirtless yes. horse back oh, riding trip with him. You know him. what? You want to talk maybe about he Hillary? Should, because I want Isn't to see. Hillary the one that did the reset button? Isn't yeah. Obama the one who said after the election, tell him that, that we'll have a conversation? And, and, Bill Clinton, and, and Bill Clinton made half a million dollars for a 90-minute speech in Moscow. And by the way, Donald Trump has said, hey, Clinton, put out your health records. I'm putting out all mine. Well, I'd like to see it's him put out his health records. He is putting out his health records. The guy's not well. The guy is like, he's nonstop. He's the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, complete dynamite. It's not. If you look, if you look at their schedules from August to yeah, now, do we, do she's we doing have events, a chart events, of events, the events, and she's doing fundraisers. That he's done, huh? What? She raised, they're telling me they're pulling it she's up. She's raised $124 she, million dollars in one money. month. What, she from was the doing, foundation? What'd she do? Move the cash from here to here? Did they fly it in on a plane? To, to get uh, rid of an stop. investigation. Listen, Let's remember that. The Clintons have always been good that at taking money. The oh, don't talk good. about the foundation. Oh, you don't want to talk about the Trump Foundation. I'll happily talk about it. There's no issue there whatsoever. No issue? No issue. The foundation, case of identity, gives that money. Clinton campaign 12 events. Trump had between 20 Five and thirty-six. Right. And she fundraisers okay. with millionaires. And by the way, most of her events, they have to add walls because nobody shows up. His, they, they, they're and blocks. And you know what? Long. Crown size do not equal votes. Yeah. Just ask Bernie Sanders. Well, uh, that's only if well, Bernie, dead people actually, are voting. Bernie, oh, Bernie Sanders, come on, Judge. Bernie you don't Sanders, believe that, do you? I do. I prosecuted those cases. Bernie Sanders went from 5% to 50%. He did pretty well. All right. Listen, here's fantastic. the bottom line. All right. Donald well, Trump, everybody, that was a real free-for-all. I apologize. Boris had started Chris. Um, it's our first day <laughs> back. This is my best. This is my best. Not not as bad as on Donald <laughs> Trump versus. All right, guys. Shh. Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton on national security. We've got a retired general and Trump supporter, Remo Butler. He's standing by to talk live about that and more. And later, the FBI says that Hillary's aides destroyed her blackberries with a hammer. So you know where I had to go with that one. And you can't miss so, this. So a judge walks into a hardware store with two brothers and buys a hammer. What's up? Street justice coming up. And you can't miss this. I put Hillary's methods to the test. See, I got a big hammer as justice rolls on. 
Developing tonight, the safety and security of our country is at stake, with Election Day only weeks away. My next guest is one of the 88 retired military generals and admirals who endorsed Donald Trump for president. Retired Brigadier General Remo Butler joins me now. Good evening, General. Uh, thanks so much for being with us this evening. You initially said that it was a difficult decision for you, but you made the decision to endorse Donald Trump. Quickly, why? Judge Janine, welcome back, and I want to say you are fired up tonight. <laughs> do you think, <laughs> General, do you think I had reason to be? Uh, well, each person has its own reasons, but you were fired up, so I'll answer the question now. <laughs> okay. Um, as I've said earlier, it was a very hard choice for me to decide to support Donald Trump. After listening to him, listening to both candidates, Donald is very, very strong on defense and the military. And that is one of the things that garnered my support. The other, he has called many people that I know, former military officers, to guide him. And these are people that I have a lot of respect right. for. Right. And I know that they're going to give him the best advice possible. If he listens to that advice, we're going to do well. Okay, let, let me move from that. Here we are, General, on the eve of 9-11. Uh, Hillary Clinton has indicated that she will not send ground troops uh, and, and, uh, to fight ISIS. And are you confident or comfortable with the possibility of ever being able to defeat ISIS with that kind of approach? There are two things. People always say Donald Trump never says his plan. He never says his plan. Well, sometimes when you give people forewarning, they can counteract your plan. Right. I, I don't think that, I don't know what Secretary Clinton knows, but I will say this. I would never say never when it comes to military affairs. You don't take anything off the table. You leave all options open. It's almost as if a game of chess. If the person you're playing against knows what you're going to do, what you're not going to do, you're going to lose. And it, it's, it, in terms of the, um, uh, the, the possibility of ground troops and, and possibly going forward with them, let's assume that that's not an issue anymore, that the problem is so widespread in this country what do we do about those homegrown uh, terrorists in this country? That's a huge issue and a huge problem because there are so many ways that a homegrown terrorist can hit you right here, like the Orlando shooting, homegrown, like in California. Those are very hard, and unless someone says something, and, and we're in a society today where people don't want to say anything. They don't want to get involved. But we as Americans worried about our security, should always get involved. Keep your eyes open. If you see something suspicious, let somebody know. Or if one of your friends come to you and says, you know what, I just bought 22 new guns and I'm going to shoot somebody. I think you might want to tell someone. Well, you know what's interesting, General? I mean, when you have a presidential candidate saying, you know, you're an Islamophobe, I mean, that is the whole mentality that prevents people like the people in San Bernardino from saying anything. Anyway, uh, General Butler, uh, we're, we're out of time, but uh, we're thrilled to have you on, Justice, and uh, we hope that you'll come back. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Judge. Appreciate it. All right. And GOPAC Chair David Abella is coming up. Plus, my next guest with new inside information about the Clinton Foundation. Might it decide this election? And speaking of Hillary. <laughs> you know what it takes to destroy a Blackberry? I do my best impression of a Clinton aide, and you can't miss it. Street justice still ahead. Don't go away. <laughs> New questions tonight about the Clinton Foundation and allegations of charity fraud. This is the myriad of scandals plaguing Hillary Clinton only seem to deepen as we get closer to Election Day. Here in a justice exclusive with new details about the foundation, financial whistleblower Charles Ortel, who exposed GE before the crash, and columnist for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Jack Kelly. Good evening, gentlemen.
Chairman. Uh, I am going to start with you, Charles. Uh, the Clintons say that their foundation is a force for good. And in fact, Bill Clinton came out this week and actually said that he's kind of like Robin Hood, taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Is there any truth to that? I think it's just the opposite. I think it's Robin Hood in reverse. In fact, what he's doing is standing in front of money that's destined for poor and desperate people around the world and diverting it to his rich cronies and maybe to himself and his family. Uh, the fact is, with the Clinton Foundation, nobody really knows because they've never had an external valid audit of their financial statements from 1997 to the present. No one really knows. Okay, now you did the uh, investigation that basically uh, identified the fraud that was going on in GE. And right now, you are making some statements that should have been uncovered by attorney ge attorneys general across the United States. Yeah, this fraud, like many frauds, starts small in 1997. This was supposed to be a library and research facility only in Little Rock. And it never got legally compliant audits in the very beginning when they built the f building out in Little Rock. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And it's such a huge embarrassment that the politicians, I think, in both parties don't want to get to the truth. All right, Jack Kelly, you have written about this in, in a historical context. I mean, how do you explain what Charles is saying? And do you agree with Charles? Well, what Charles and uh, primarily Charles and a handful of others uh, have done uh, is expose what's not merely the greatest political fraud in American history. It's greater than all the others combined. And it's uh, the whole point of the email scandal was to cover up the play for pay yep. that's involved with the Clinton Foundation. You know what's interesting, Jack, is this week uh, we find out that, that blackberries were destroyed with hammers. And after federal subpoenas were served, you know, lawyers from the Clinton Foundation get on the phone with Platte River. And, you know, at that point, two, three weeks later, they use bleach bit and destroy the records. But, but what percentage, Charles, of the foundation's money goes to charities? I mean, do we even know? You're just guessing. We're just guessing. The real, in these type of frauds, the real step is not even in the numbers that you see. It's money is sent towards the Clinton Foundation, and nobody really knows how much money is diverted before it hits the books. That's the real issue. They've never had independent trustees. They've never had independent auditors. My estimate is you're talking all, with all the affiliates about $100 billion minimum. And in their books, they only show $2 billion coming in for the period. hundred billion? Billion. Counting all affiliates. Counting the Global Fund, counting the Unitate, counting Haiti, counting Tsunami Fund, counting, you know, there are lots and lots of affiliated entities which are supposed to be disclosed in these books but never have been. And, and, and Jack, in terms of your investigations, I mean, have you found similar uh, frustrations or numbers? Well, what is, disturbs me the most are the security implications of some of this pay for pay, uh, play uh, that Hillary did as Secretary of State. One was permitting the Russians to acquire 20% yeah, of America's uranium. And the other is the development of uh, the Skolkovo uh, Research Center in Russia, which is their Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. uh, which has become a transfer point uh, for dual use, for military use technology. Uh, for the Russians. And 17 of the 28 companies involved in Skolkovo are either Clinton Foundation contributors or people who have paid megabucks to have Bill Clinton speak to them. But then, but, but, but why, and this is to either one of you, uh, you know, do they have so many people that they're connected to that no one is willing to look at this in either party? Well, the news, I would say, is that actually in, in both parties and around the world, people are digging in. And I would expect over the next several weeks here, I'm calling for a conservator to be appointed right now to take control of the Clinton Foundation. And I'm calling for attorneys general to stop fundraising inside this country in every state. And I'm calling for the major governments around the world to stand up and explain in Australia, in Norway, in France, in the UK, why they allowed so much money to go to the Clinton Foundation without letting the, forcing the Clinton Foundation to account to their own taxpayers where it went.
And you know what's interesting is that, uh, you know, with these 501c3s and these conservatives, these little organizations, are the IRS is on top of them. That's exactly what this is, a 501c3. And But when you look at Jim Comey and Loretta Lynch, you know that there's not going to be any justice. Exactly. You know, the person in the IRS who was looking after this was Lois Lerner from oh. 2001 to 2013. All right. Charles Artel, Jack Kelly, thank you so much. We're going to have you back. We're going to follow this one. Thanks for everything. All right. And street justice still ahead, and I'm dropping the hammer. And next, GOPAC chairman David Avella is here to talk Hillary, Donald, and that basket of deplorables. Justice, back in a moment. Back to the developing story of the night regret from the campaign trail as Hillary Clinton walks back her remark calling Trump supporters deplorables. <laughs> but with polls showing a national dead heat between Trump and Clinton, are we seeing the Clinton campaign collapse? Let's ask GOPAC chairman and Republican strategist David Avella. All right, David, good evening. Good evening. Uh, what do you, you know, it's interesting. I had Mary Ann Marsh here uh, earlier on the show, and she said she did not apologize, Hillary, for her statement calling us half of us deplorable, racist, xenophobes, sexist, whatever, and on and on, Islamophobes. Uh, she said she actually doubled down. Uh, Donald. Donald Trump is in Hillary Clinton's head, uh, Judge. Uh, first signs that the polls this week showing the race tightening, and in some polls, Donald Trump actually up. Yes, yeah, CNN uh, has him up. That's right. And as we get ready for the debates, if you're the Clinton campaign, you have to be concerned about a woman who can't talk off of script is going to get into a debate with Donald Trump, and he's going to make her yeah. have not just this unforced error, but many more. And you just see, we've got up 49 to 48, according to CNN. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, when Hillary Clinton uh, or her team made the decision to you know, say, well, you know, we really didn't mean it, uh, that it wasn't something that she herself uh, uh, had thought of, seeing as it took like 16, 17 hours later. But what do you think it's going to take going forward for Donald to pull this through? Well, he has to have strong debate performances and the advertising that's going to, uh, each campaign's going to do, those are going to be the two biggest deciding factors. But Judge, look, we're now at the point in the race, and you did today a wedding ceremony where two people made a commitment to one another. Mm. And that's where voters are right now. They got to start making a commitment to who their candidate is and who they're going to turn out for. And as you see, the number of undecideds, even in the CNN poll, a pretty high number for this point in the election. What happens to those undecided voters? Do they decide to stay home? There is certainly some indication for that. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to this being an election decided by swing voters, we're shaping up for an election that's going to be decided by base voters. And the people that are most committed to their candidate is the one, are the ones who are going to show up. And right now, that potentially favors Donald Trump. Yeah, well, I think so. I mean, I'm infuriated, and I can't imagine that any one of those uh, people who are supporting Donald Trump after hearing that, I mean, I don't want a president who thinks that I'm deplorable because she's not going to protect me. And she couldn't protect uh, Ambassador Stevens. She couldn't give him more security. She, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, it, it makes me crazy. But anyway, let's, let's go to her health, stamina. 59 days before the election. Now, I think, based upon her coughing fits, based upon what I read in the FBI report that she couldn't remember things because she had a concussion, and then she had a blood clot, and then she had this and that, and then she needs people to help her walk. Then maybe she had something in her ear because she couldn't hear or because she had to be prompted. Uh, and then the number of events that she's been to versus Donald has been to, you know, I mean, I wonder if that's stamina in the last 59 days is going to start showing. Well, Judge, who knows? Only a doctor is going to be able to tell whether she's healthy enough to be president of the United States. But look, I think it's bigger than her health. I think this is her campaign team saying we need to protect her. We need to make sure we don't put her out. Because the more we put her out, the more lies we have to defend, and the more we have to clean up after messes like she just had with her comment about baskets of deplorables. I think the campaign is intentionally keeping her under wraps so that she doesn't cause them more problems and trying to 
get her elected. Okay, and finally, in terms of uh, those people in in the in, in the uh, states like Pennsylvania uh, that are tight right now, uh, does the ground game matter? No, ground game always matters, as we were just talking about. Uh, who turns out ultimately decides the election. And right. we talked, uh, Bill Clinton, you think about his comment today being critical, or a couple days ago, talk, being critical of coal people. Well, I don't know okay. if the President Clinton remembers, but there's a lot of coal people in Pennsylvania. That's right. David Avella, thanks so much for being thanks, with Judge. us. And can I be a Hillary Clinton aide? Watch me do my best impression of a Hillary Clinton aide on Street Justice next. One of the revelations in the FBI report about Hillary Clinton that got me thinking was that her loyal aides destroyed multiple blackberries, presumably at her order. That's a lot of work to cover something up. Don't believe me? Take a look. It's tonight's Street Justice. I'm here at Brothers Hardware, and I'm looking for a hammer. Let's go in. Jimmy? Yes, that's me. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Thanks for inviting us into Brothers Hardware. Pleasure. I'm looking for a hammer that is strong enough to get rid of a Blackberry. You have any of that stuff? American made or import? Uh, I like American, although I don't know what she likes, but let's take a look. So tell me, what are my choices here? Well, you are seeing you're a woman, there's a little light hammer. To... Hold on, hold on. Seeing I'm a woman? It's a woman's, you know, it's an eight ounce ladies hammer, they call it. Dad! You really want to do the damage? Yeah, I'm interested in damage. You got this bad boy. That's four pounds. That's four Whoa! Pounds. That's this is heavy. Now I'm going to make believe I'm one of Hillary's aides destroying the evidence. I will start with the ladies hammer, and although they want me to wear goggles, I prefer my own sunglasses. You know what? Jimmy's right. It takes more than the lady's hammer. All right, now I'm taking the He-Man hammer. <laughs> you know what it takes to destroy a blackberry? I gotta tell you, look at my arms. I have strong arms, okay? What did it take for them to destroy the evidence in the Hillary's case? A lot. I'm gonna use both hands. I'm getting better at this, Jimmy. I just beat the crap out of this Blackberry. Now, why would someone do that to a Blackberry? It's not as good as an iPhone. Not as good as an iPhone? If I had gotten a subpoena and they said, save your Blackberry, but instead I took a hammer to it, what does it tell you about me? I don't know. I don't that know. you hate Blackberries? Yeah, you don't like the Blackberries? Or that maybe I didn't want to hand it over because they subpoenaed it? Right, right. You didn't want to share any information there? You gonna vote for her? Don't think so. You see this Blackberry? I just beat it up with a hammer. How tall are you? Maybe I didn't want the people who subpoenaed it to get it? Well, that's a possibility, sure. Know where I'm going? I don't, really. Tampering, destruction, contempt? Right? I think so. You still gonna vote for her? For whom? Hillary! Oh, 100%. Does it mean that I really didn't want them to get the information or I just wanted to destroy it? What does it tell you? That you're trying to hide something. She's quick. Yeah, but no, maybe... No, no, maybe they were hiding. Okay, can I buy a dress? It's gorgeous. I'm going to come back. I have no money. Okay. You still going to vote for Hillary? Oh, forget about Hillary. Don't forget about Benghazi. So for them to destroy the blackberries with a hammer took a lot of work, a lot of intent. Jim Comey, if this ain't intent, then there's no such thing. <laughs> and here's the evidence. And next, I'll take you along with me on, on a trip through my vacation photo album. We'll be right back. Here's the evidence. Okay, so I was away for a couple of weeks and I missed you terribly, but I want to share some pictures. That's me in Capri shopping. As you can see, I grabbed everything I could hold. Next picture. That's me after shopping, exhausted, with my sneakers still on. 
That's me in Ireland at St. Mary's Church in uh, the village Kong, County Mayo. Next. That's me in a village Kong. As a th it's a thatch roof from the movie The Quiet Man, John Wayne. That's me, Schmidix. I'm behind the bar. That's the uh, brew. It was great. That's me, County Kong. County Mayo, Kong. Oh, that's me. There's a hawk on my arm. That hawk needed a fresh chicken head to come back down. Okay, that's me and the dogs in Ashford Castle. That's it for... Uh, there's another one. Oh, that's me in Ireland. I loved Ireland. Remember, friend me on Facebook. Don't forget, next week, I'm back.